Alright, what's up everybody? It's your boy Akeen and welcome to today's vlog. For today, I'm here to talk about the scenarios for the BCS on bowl matchups for Big East Conference and the Big 12 Conference. We have two major games that are going to be important this week for each respected conference respected conferences that will determine who will win the championships outright and will represent the, 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 the conference in the BCS bowl games. Now I'm going to start things off with the Big East Conference. Right now the leaders is Rutgers with just one loss due to the defeat last week to Pittsburgh 27-6. to Now there's two, three teams right behind them in Cincinnati, Syracuse, and Louisville. Now the matchup that's going to be who will determine who will win the Big East Championship is this matchup tomorrow between Rutgers, host Louisville. This is going to be an interesting game. Now, here's the scenario for the Big East Conference. If Louisville wins, that means there will be a probably a four-way tie between Syracuse, Louisville, Rutgers, and Cincinnati if they beat Connecticut this Saturday. Now, this is going to be very key because if Louisville wins this game, that means the computer is going to have to determine who will represent the Big East Conference in the BCS Bowl matchups. And also, this can ruin the hopes for, for MAC team Kent State, who's playing Northern Illinois for the MAC championship. If, if Rutgers wins, that Matt wins this battle, that means it could give high hopes for Kent State. They could still represent the big uh, uh, BCS at large bid for the BCS bowl games. The reason, why I'm, the reason why I'm saying this is because right now the ranked 17th. Now, due to the new BCS bowl rules, if you're as a non BCS um, um, conference champion, um, uh, if a non AQ conference champion makes it to the top 16, they could prop, they could still get a bid, an at large bid in the BCS bowl games. Right now, Kent State is at 17th. And if they win their game on Friday in the MAC championship against Northern Illinois, they can get their shot playing for a BCS bowl game. But they're going to really need Rutgers to win this game because they beat Rutgers early on in the season. Now, this game is going to be very key. Now, for Rutgers, if they win this game, they will outright win the Big East Championship and will represent the Big East and the BCS Bowl matches. Now, I'm going to talk about this game overall, give you a quick scoop on that. Now, this game is going to be played at Rutgers, and both these two teams suffered a loss last week. Louisville had a surprising loss to Connecticut, 23-20 in overtime, while Rutgers lost 27-6 to a surprising Pittsburgh team. This Pittsburgh team did pretty well overall this season, almost beat um, um, no, number one Notre Dame at South Bend and this is this was a big upset alert for Rutgers and they ended up getting upset. Now for Louisville that was a shocking loss to Connecticut. I can't believe they played against it. They, they played terrible against a terrible Connecticut team. I really thought that Louisville was going to pull the easy W on that. Now for this matchup, the keys for this game for Louisville, they're gonna really have to get that ground game together. Now they're gonna have to play without star running back on um, um, Sonoris Perry, who's out for the remainder of the season due to a torn ACL. So their leading rusher, Jeremy Wright, he's averaging 4.4 yards per carry, is gonna have to carry the bulk of the load and drive that football well, running the football, pound that football against a good Rutgers Scarlet Knight defense who averages 13.7 points allowed per game on that defensive side led by line. Linebacker Kasim Green, he was last year's Defensive Player of the Year. That's going to be key for Louisville. Also, Teddy Bridgewater, he's going to have to continue doing his thing. Now, on the defensive side for the Cardinals, one thing they really need in particular, they need to contain that run game for um, against Rutgers and their running back ja uh, Jaheim. Um, I'm sorry, Jahan Jeans. This is a good running back for um, a Rutgers, and I think he could give you a good game for the Rutgers Scarlet Knight. He needs to get the ball rolling. He's been struggling for the past three games along with quarterback Gary Nova, but for the key for the um, the Cardinal defense, they're going to have to keep containment in that ground game for Jamison. I'm, I'm Jahan Jamison. I said Jeans for some reason. I'm mistaken that name, but Jamison is his last name for, for the Rutgers running back. But uh, one particular player in particular for the Louisville Cardinal defense I need to talk about is Preston Brown, who's been playing pretty good for the past five games. He struggled for the first six games of the season, but in the second half of the college football season, he's been pulling off good numbers, averaging at least 10 tackles per game for the last five games, and he's going to be key for that defense. He's going to have to plug in the holes a couple of times and control that uh, that line of scrimmage and ended up ruining the ground attack for uh, the Rutgers deep, um, um, offense 
forcing Gary Nova to control this game and win the game based on his harm. And he has been struggling for the past three games himself throwing the football. And, he, and also, that's probably the reason why they lost last week because that offense for um, Gary Nova and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, they have been struggling and depending too much on that defensive side. Now, for Rutgers, I already mentioned Gary Nova. He's going to have to get into a rhythm passing the football effectively, and they have to get, do well running the football uh, um, as well. Now, for the defensive side, for um, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, they're just going to really have to stop the run and con keep containment of Teddy Bridgewater and cause some turnovers in this matchup. If they cause at least two turnovers in this game, Rutgers should definitely win this matchup. Now, overall, I'm going to have to go with Rutgers in this one. I really want to see this Rutgers team represent the Big East for the BCS Bowl, um, Bowl Series because this is going to be the first time they're going to represent the Big East and it's about time to start for us to see something new. We already saw Louisville go in the Orange Bowl a couple of years back. They won the Big East Championships a couple of times and I think it's time for us to see something new and I really believe in this Scarlet Knight defense. I'm going to have to go with Rutgers or Louisville in this matchup. Now, I'm going to flip things over and head over to Big 12 Conference. This is going to be a big game this week between number six Kansas State and number 18 Texas. All Kansas State has to do is win this game and they will win the um, Big 12 championship outright and represent this conference most likely will go to the Fiesta Bowl and the BCS Bowl games. Now also I need to talk about quarterback Colin Klein. He has been he struggled last week and their loss to Baylor. He committed three interceptions in this game and he cannot do that against a decent Texas Longhorn defense. He's going to have to perform a lot better and if he does have a good game I really think he should still get a, a candidacy for this year's Heisman Trophy. He should be back in the race if he has a big career game at home in Manhattan against a good Texas Longhorn team who is 8-3 overall. Now for Texas, that, that running game, they struggled last week against TCU and they lost 20-13. to 13. They really needed to get that ball rolling for the, run, for the run game in order to set up the pass with David Ashley in the way at quarterback. So which means Jonathan Gray is going to have to go to work as well as Joe Bergeron running the football effectively, get in a good rotation and average at least 5 yards per carry and pound a rock against a great Kansas State um, defense. Now for Kansas State, going back to them, that defense, they need to do a lot better against the ground, the, the, the rush attack. And that's why they lost last week to Baylor. Baylor ran all over this Wildcat defense, and they need to perform a lot better within that front seven. Arthur Brown needs to be that leader, that vocal leader for that team, and plug holes in between, between each gap and stop the run. If they stop the run against Texas, they should have no problem winning this game. And they do have the home field advantage. Now I'm going to have to go with the Kansas State Wildcats over my Longhorns, but I think this this is going to be a good game. I think Colin Klein is going to get back in rhythm. I think he's going to have a decent game, and that defense is going to stop the run. If they stop the run, the pressure is going to be put towards David Ash, and I don't think he's good enough to win a game by himself. He's going to need a support and cast in order for this Longhorn team to beat the Wildcats, and I think the Wildcats is going to win. I have to stick with my analyst job. I have to stick with my job, even though I am a Longhorn fan, and I would love to see Texas win. I still got to go with Kansas State and do my job. Now, here's the scenario for the Big 12 Conference. If Kansas State loses and Oklahoma beats um, TCU, Oklahoma will most likely win the Big 12 um, Championship and represent the conference in the BCS, in, in the BCS ball games. But they have a tough bat battle against TCU, who beat my Longhorn team at Austin last week. This is going to be a tough game. This is going to be played at Fort Worth, at TCU. So, and I think... The, uh, T uh, and I think um, um, uh, Oklahoma's in the roof and is, is knows that this TCU team is pretty good, led by quarterback Trevon Boykin. He's a good dual threat, and they're gonna have to he can he, he, he make, make him beat him with his arm and keep containment in the ground game. Now for that defense for Oklahoma, they need to perform a lot better. They gave up over a hundred points in the last two games in their matchups against West Virginia and in an overtime thriller, big time overtime thriller over um of um, Oklahoma State last week, and I think they need to do a lot bit better on that defensive side. They do good on defense. I think Landry Jones is going to do well offensively and score a lot of points. I think Landry Jones is going to take care of things, get the job done on the offensive side, but that defense needs to keep containment of Boykin and cause a couple of turnovers and not give up so many points. So I'm going to have to go with Oklahoma over TCU. I think this should be a good win, and I still think even if they do lose, they can still 
if they still, if, if they, even though they do, they don't win the Big 12 championship. If Kansas State wins, I still think they can still get an at-large bid in the BCS bowl games, space on the computers, and ruin things for for um teams like Kent State and probably even Boise State, who is actually still in the mix for BCS at-large bid. But I think that Oklahoma can get an at-large bid as well as Kent State, depending on what happens this week. Now, I already mentioned Kent State. The next time I'm going to catch you guys is tomorrow to talk about the MAC championship and give you a full five-minute preview on that, as well as the Pac-12 championship between UCLA LA, and Stanford. And I will give you both individual previews of both those games tomorrow. I'll catch you guys then. Thank you for watching today's vlog. I'm your man, Akeem McCall. Be easy.